What's happening, guys? We are headed back to Koba. Let's go to I'm gonna go and get some. How can we be sure this experiment's gonna work anyway? We cannot. The lining done. So we start up some arrays, whatever those are, punch a hole in the abyss, and then fly through? Yeah, that's yes. pretty much it. Pretty much it. <laughs> All right, Cal, get up here. So we need to go back to the array. Right? No, I don't want to do a rumor. Why is that? Hobo Control Center. Who the fuck is that at? I legit can't even tell what level this mission is supposed to be on. We're over there, I guess. Can I go this way? Does that look right? Control Center. Is that what this is? Sure, you bet. Maybe I don't know. Welcome. I am Centauri Cree, the director of this experimental facility. Safety protocols require one person to remain here while the arrays are active. Freeze. Unless one of us is gonna stay behind. We need someone here to activate the arrays. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll ask around. See if anyone's got a death wish. Maybe Turtle? Maybe not Turtle. Okay. Stop here. All right, what sort of sassafras are we going to have to go through to get this stuff aligned up? Nothing here yet. Hurt troopers. Where are they? Good question, Cal. Good question. Right. Uh 
Oh, there's more. Oh, we got flame troopers. We do have flame troopers, two of them. I can and I will. Hmm. Up there, maybe not. Where'd you go, probe droid? Spawning in randomly here. Probably. Impressive. So this is your kingdom. I work with many talented scientists. None as talented as you, Centauri. And yet we've reached an impasse. Perhaps he will bring me some much needed luck. Perhaps. Not bad for an abandoned facility. Did I do something? Now we just have to activate them. Free must have locked down the facility when they evacuated. That's not gonna stop us. Okay. I guess the platform is somewhere else. Proceed to the observation deck to initiate alignment. Huh. You gotta hand it to Cree. She thought of everything. Yippee-ki-yay. when we're in position? Oh, I stand ready for your order. It would be my honor to see Master Kree's dream alive once more. Perfect. We're your master. Oh, that's... That was it? Okay. Time to head back to the Mantis, buddy. Let me go through the abyss. 
Through the abyss. I'm not thrilled about it either. That's the only way we're getting to Tantalor. I feel like Tantalor is just not that secret hideout everybody thought it was. First, it was the only way you could get through there is to have this secret compass. Now it's like, oh, well, you could also get there by doing this. And pretty soon it's just going to be added on to the bus stop route. So you can go get some eggs from the grocery store. Be able to go to the gas station, get some snacks and stop by Tantalor on the way home. Breathe. Let's travel back to the Mantis. go where to go and lore all right let's go see what this journey is going to be like <laughs> your uh, hood's kind of glitching out a little bit there Marin. oh that's better now So just a standard hyperspace jump to Tantalor, then nothing exciting like following lasers through space. I mean, Breeze is ready for a bumpy ride. That could have been done a little differently, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it is. Cal, is it time? We're heading to the abyss now. Fire up the arrays. I'll be monitoring your progress from here. May the force be with you all. Thank you, Z. Where in the heck did we go in a hyperspace from? Like, just farther away to the other side of the planet? Dag and Gera was the only person to live through what we're about to do. At least we will die together. Hey, great pep talk, kid. Hopefully they can fit that on my tombstone. Look. That's what all the other poor saps said right before they were torn into vortex chow. Great. Now it's an obstacle course. Is there ever any doubt? Coming too fast? But you are faster. Stop piloting and start flying. I'm rerouting power from deflectors to the engines. What are you, crazy? You're trading safety for speed. Exactly. We're all in on you, buddy. You're right. It's my ship, ain't it? 
Greasy does it, baby! This tunnel getting a tad cozy. It's not just you. See what's going on? The arrays are overloading. There's nothing I can do. We need to go faster. I'm going as fast as I can. Wait, wait a minute. Are you crazy? If you jump in a hyperspace blind, they'll be picking up pieces of the man. It's all over the outer rim. Do you trust me? You know I do, Cal. <laughs> Let her ride. Now. How'd the ship tell when to come out of hyperspace? <laughs> I don't know about that one there, Disney. Son of a gun dark. <laughs> well, at least none of us lost our cool. Huh. Wow. I hope it's worth it. Looks a lot different in the uh, Force Visions we had. Oh, maybe not. Haven's Edge. So this is Tanalor. Not what you were expecting? I don't know what I was expecting. So much has changed since I first heard its name. The temple's this way. Dagon and Centauri Creed planned their future here. And look where it got them. Yeah, I mean... We don't know what happened to Santari Cree for sure. She could be hanging out here. Who knows? Stop the forced perspective. Which way do I need to go? Bode will not let this end peacefully. He has already used fatherhood to justify betrayal and murder. Now we have him cornered with nowhere else to run. He will kill or be killed. Well, say something. You're right. But what about Kata? She's not much younger than we were when our families were taken from us. I know. You and I will carry that loss for the rest of our lives. But Kata still has a chance. Yes, she does. Very well. We will give Bo the choice to stand down. For Kata's sake. And ours. I keep thinking about something Seer once said. A warning. Every Jedi faces the dark side. I feel so much hatred towards Bode. Seer won her battle with the dark side. You will too. Fall back to the temple. The Nile are enveloping our position. Master Gera, that is an order. The Nihil. Not sure I know who though they are exactly. Do you hear that? Kata. If you watch 
watch over me. We're here to kill your dad. Hiding. CD1. Hey, Katza. This is Marin. She's a friend. I'm sorry Papa hurt you. Yeah. He said I'd never see you again. What are you doing here? Kata, your father stole something very important. We're gonna ask him to give it back. Will you show us the way? We need it back, though? Okay. Follow me. I mean, we've got the uh, other array. I don't like it here. It's dark and lonely. You don't have to be afraid. Better? Eh, I don't know. Creepy green light. You're very pretty. We really need Kata to show us down a hallway. Did you get here? It wasn't easy. You shouldn't have followed us. Papa, don't! Stay back, Kata. This is the only way to keep you safe. She will be safe. I promise, Bode. But listen to You must die. It's over. Lay down your weapons. This planet will be a haven for those hunted by the Empire, including Kata and you. But you have to surrender now. Go outside, Kata. Listen to them, please. <laughs> So he chooses death. I will decide what's best for my family. We should have stayed out of this. Learn to fight. Distract him. I will strike from the shadow. Your... Okay. Tantalor for everybody, Bode. Come on. Oh, 
old school fight now. We don't need no lightsabers. Oh. Ha! He messed with my dog. Oh man, did we break our compass? Oh, we broke our blasters. Got nothing to say about that, Bode? Dead. You know you're dead. Don't put this on your daughter. Embrace the dark side, cat. We know what it's like to grow up alone. Please listen to them, Papa. All right. And when the Empire comes. Eyes, lies. To protect my little girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kada. I tried. the shoulder muscle. Mm. Oh. Give him a couple more, Cal, just to be sure. Sorry we killed your dad. How are you feeling? Better. Thanks. Good. We should speak. I was not much older than you when I lost my family. For many years I carried this pain. I did not want to feel better. Why? I thought if I let go of the pain, I would be letting go of the people I loved. But I was wrong. And one day, I met someone who also lost his family. Together we found another way to survive. This pain is yours. It is part of you. When my mother died, it changed Papa. And me too, I guess. Yes. But it does not have to define you. 
and you must not let it consume you. earlier when we got here and that we did that force echo and it was like the Nile Nile hoose are coming or something wasn't there a a Sith like Darth Nihilus or something is that who they were talking about because I think um that Sith was from the High Republic era I think I think it's a she and she was in like the older public games. So is Kata going to become our apprentice now? Does she have... be sensitive to the Force like her father? That was a really weird animation there. Look at that. Was oh, it supposed to be like that? Okay. That's just a really strange choice for this cutscene. That was weird. You saved my life on Brock. You let me walk my own path. I needed to. You taught me what it truly means to be a Jedi. Now you're gone. We will continue your legacy, Seer. We will build something that can outlast the Empire. I promise you that. I promise. But I'm scared. I almost lost myself. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready for what comes next.
guide her through the darkness. I feel like they're definitely talking about Kata there. That's probably going to be a premise for the next game, maybe. I don't know. I kind of feel like they... Like the story like literally just went off the rails in the last third of the game which was really weird because I thought they've been doing a pretty good job um even though as I mentioned I think Dagon was the best you know villain I felt like the second sister from the first game she was a much more compelling uh, antagonist but I mean the story pieces they had there was you know finding a way to get to Tantalor and, you know, have it a, a refuge from the Empire where they could kind of stay hidden. And it would help explain, you know, a lot of stuff from the Star Wars universe, you know, that's in canon. Like, you know, where were these guys at during, you know, A New Hope and the Rebellion and stuff? You know, maybe they're still here. And, you know, I mentioned it you know many times throughout the playthrough like you know with Bode something just kind of felt off like he just wasn't you know there's something felt off about him so it was kind of it was good to see that pay off that feeling pay off but I don't really see what the point of making him a Jedi was like I felt like they did not need to go down that path would have been fine with just Bode betraying the team because he's a secret Imperial agent and you know may his daughter's not even real stuff like that and they still could have you know had the sequence where we go to the Imperial base because that was, that was kind of a fun little sequence I enjoyed that um, when we started getting like the embrace the darkness with the force powers and stuff so But, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of felt like somewhere around, I don't know, when we were on the uh, um, the droid control ship, you know, we fought Ravis for like a tiny little bit and cut off his arm. And then we kind of fought Dagon for a little bit and he ran away and it's just like, I think that's kind of when the story just kind of started to go a little wonky. Be interesting to see what the next game is, because I think that the director had stated at some point in time, whether it was recently or around the time of the first game, that he had envisioned this being like a trilogy, so... I feel like we'll probably get another game. I, I don't think this one did as well as the first one as far as sales and uh, critic reviews and things like that, but I feel like it was a good, good follow-up. The first game, I think, was better in terms of story. Um, I did like some of the new force powers and force moves in this one. The expanded skill tree was nice in this one. Because the first one, the skill tree, really kind of felt like there wasn't much there. There wasn't a lot of choices that would, you know, change how you play the game. Like, we didn't even really touch dual-wielding lightsabers. Um, we played with a lightsaber and a blaster for a little bit. 
and then the uh, cross guard like the strong attack lightsaber we played with that for a little bit but basically the game was single blade and then um, double bladed so I imagine if you played through again you know using different combat stances it'd give it a definitely a fresh playthrough that's probably what I'm going to do for like finishing up the game as far as um, 100%ing the planets and things like that. That's something I definitely do want to do. But like I mentioned, kind of when I started hopping back into the game, I it just, I don't know, after playing Zelda, I think Zelda especially as far as like the way you move around the world and things like that, there's really very few games that are that good. Um, I don't know, it just felt like some of the stuff in, in this one was kind of shoehorned in just for the sake of being there. Some of the platforming was just, you know, here's platforming sequence for you because we want to put one in. Whereas like in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, you know, there's like 10 different ways to get to a place, usually. Maybe there's a few times when you're kind of stuck down a singular path to go, go somewhere, but generally it's, you know, you can get there your way. And I really appreciate that in a game. Um, you know, combat. The combat was okay. Um, I think there's more there to play with as far as like the different stances and things like that. Um, I don't know if we can It'd be nice if we could kind of like respec our character um, if we wanted to like just take our our skill points and zero it out and then you know go towards a more of a tanky build like with the cross guard hilt. You know, so that'll be it'll be interesting to see what the uh, uh, end game stuff is. Oh, production babies! I always love this when they put this in. All the babies that were born during the production of the game. Um, but yeah, I don't want to say I feel let down because it was a it was a good game. I'd probably give it a like seven out of ten. Maybe. Uh, it started off a little bit stronger. I think it started off maybe like an 8 out of 10. And like I said, the story kind of went a little, I don't know, I guess in a direction that was just felt like a little off. Like the whole sequence with Bode and um, Cordova, like that just felt weird. Um, even, you know, playing as Seer, that was, I don't know, that was just weird. Like the whole thing with the, you got to get the balls to roll down the hill to blow up the, the two Imperial walkers that were coming, the AT-ATs. That was just kind of a little, I don't know, that, that whole sequence felt out of place you know we we could have probably just cut to you know the mantis picking up cal after uh uh boat had knocked him off of the cliff and you know then figuring out where they need to go from there and go into the imperial base i i also kind of had a feeling in my mind that the the new Jedi archives and everything that was just going to be destroyed when the Death Star uh, attacked Jeddah in uh, Rogue One because I mean it basically took out a good chunk of the planet who knows what could have survived you know since it seemed like it was underground quite a bit and stuff like that but that's kind of what I thought when, like, the alarm was going off and stuff, too, was, you know, oh, crap, it's, uh, 
Oh, it's uh, Rogue One. Death Star's here. But, you know, timeline-wise, that really would make sense. Because they're, they're still... You know, this game is earlier than than that in the timeline, so... I thought that would have been cool. Or maybe, like, Seer decided to stay there and... You know, we just find out maybe in the next game that's what happens. And then, yeah, having Darth Vader show up too, I mean, it's just... I don't know. You get kind of tired of seeing Darth Vader pop up and stuff. You know, they, they have a whole universe of characters that they can do, and sometimes they just, um, for lack of a better word, they force in... You know, somebody like Vader. Like the first game, I felt like it made more sense because, you know, Inquisitors and things like that. And we're like at the Inquisitor base and then, oh, boom, all of a sudden, bam, he's there. But on Jedi, I mean, there was no Inquisitors there. You know, you had your Purge Troopers and stuff like that. And it's just like, let's just throw Darth Vader in so you can fight Darth Vader. And it's, it's never never a fight where you're wondering what the outcome's going to be. I feel like that just kind of takes away from the uh, the intensity of the fight. You know, it's like, who's going to die? Are you going to die or am I going to die? And, you know, eventually it's a video game, so the, the player ultimately is meant to succeed, but when you're playing against somebody that you know can't die. Like, you know, as soon as we saw Vader, it's like, yep, Sears so probably going to die. Yeah, I mean, it was a fairly good game. Like I said, 7 out of 10. 7.5, maybe. Just for the, the Star Wars fanboy in me did like some of the kind of the neat little references like the Z-95 headhunter uh, the ship that, that Bode was like flying around in uh, I like the orange lightsaber um, that Bode pulled out you know, kind of you know we got the um, Star Wars Ahsoka series coming out in August of this year 2023 and it's got those two you know, quote unquote dark Jedi with the orange lightsabers. It'd be cool to learn more about them and their origins and you know what makes them different from a Jedi versus a Sith. Um the High Republic stuff was cool. Like I wasn't going into the game. You know, I didn't see the story taking that turn where we're gonna be kind of you know chasing down a High Republic tail basically so that was a neat neat little trick or a neat little story thing that they threw in there I feel like the story they could have done so much more with but they kind of just I don't know it's almost like they got to a certain point in the story and they're like oh crap like we're running out of time or we're running out of money and you know we've got all these set pieces planned that we want to do let's just you know let's just slug them all in here at the end and then we're done Especially, like, you know, who knows what's on Tantalor post-game. Like, if there's anything we can explore. Um, but, I mean, the whole... Once we got to Tantalor, it was like nothing else in the game. I mean, it was just basically a empty planet. You know, we just ran to get to where we could fight Bode and end the game. I'll be interested to see if there's anything else. No, they didn't really... I don't think they really did DLC for the first game. There was maybe some cosmetic stuff that they did. Can't remember for sure. Yeah, I think there was, like, cosmetic stuff, and then they added, like, some modes where you could fight the bosses. Um, Boss-wise, too, I feel like... 
You know, I feel like the first game was better boss-wise as well. You know, in this one we had the recycled ninth sister. So, you know, when we killed her in the first game, we didn't kill her in the first game. Um, we had Dagon, which, like I said, as an antagonist, he was kind of meh. It just seemed like his whole motivations and, you know, reasons for doing the things he did, they were just kind of a stretch. And just to be there for the sake of the story versus something that actually made sense. Um, Ravis, I thought, was was cool. But, yeah, I don't know. But a lot of the stuff is kind of... kind of fluffy as far as, you know, some of the quests, side quests, and things like that. Boba Fett... So Boba Fett is in this game, so he must be like a bounty or something, or we run into him doing bounties. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of bosses that really stand out, like boss fights. And we still have like the Rancor to fight, and. Oh, we got the, what was it, the spawn of the Ogda Bogdo from the first game. Yeah, there's probably some, some, I don't want to call them world bosses, but like each planet's got their own little animal or wildlife boss to fight. Um, some of the bounty hunter bosses were kind of fun. Like when we were climbing the, the observatory on the way to um, fight Dagon, like we ran across those two guys that had... I think one had like an orange lightsaber and the other one had a force pike or something. That was kind of a fun little fight. So I think... I'm like trying to even think. Like, was there a big boss on... Jetta? Not really, there's just like that big um, kind of cinematic where we're flying around with Marin to uh, destroy the laser. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Even like Coruscant, you had the Night Sister. And then I suppose, you know, we could call Kobo, we've got Ravis, and uh, um, oh no, Ravis was kind of on the Shattered Moon, wasn't he? Did we fight him on the Shattered Moon? I think we fought him on the Shattered Moon. Yeah, we did. So you got Ravis on the Shattered Moon, and then Dagon on Kobo, Jetta, I don't know, Imperial Drilling Droid, or Drilling Machine. Not really a boss on the uh, Imperial Security Station, just a bunch of random level guys. So another thing there too at the end. It felt like they just started started chucking enemies at you to kind of ramp things up, and that's just kind of seems lazy sometimes. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. If you thought it was a 7.5 out of 10 game or thought it was better thought it was worse i'd be curious to hear your opinions but uh we're gonna let the rest of these credits roll and we will catch you next time or let's see uh tears of the kingdom is the main game on the plate now so that's what we're gonna be hitting hitting towards the most so 
Anyways, hit that like button, throw a subscription my way. I would greatly appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.